Okay, so let's uh, let's look at our three scenarios. Remember, we're talking about an investment asset, not a consumption asset, an investment asset. Under the three scenarios, no income, uh, known income, and known yield. Well, we know that the value of the forward contract or futures contract at any point in time is F0 minus the original delivery price. That's the payoff discounted back for the period of time. And you'll recall that uh, we can calculate the forward price for each of these three scenarios. Under no income, it was S0 e to the RT. Under known income, S0 minus the net present value of the income, e to the RT. And under known yield, it was S0 uh, e to the, uh, I forgot my little e in there, so let's put that in, e to the R minus Q. T. So all we have to do, notice uh, uh, for our F0 up here, is we just have to substitute this term into there for each of them. So let's have a look at, uh, at, at, at what we can derive from this. So our F at this point will equal, we'll substitute this term for the S0, uh, for the F0, S0 e to the RT minus K e to the negative rt and expand the terms s not e to the rt times e to the negative rt minus k e to the negative rt so i just multiplied each one uh, by that well what does that equal equals s not e to the rt times e to the negative rt uh, we add them when you're multiplying um, power terms, you simply add them together, e to the 0, minus k e to the negative rt. e to the 0 is 1, so that's s naught minus k e to the negative rt. So now we've expressed it a little bit easier. Look what I've done here. I've, ex I've taken out one calculation. We no longer have to calculate a futures price every time we want to calculate the value of a contract. Remember on the last screen, we valued the futures contract, then we took off the original uh, delivery price. The next day we would value it again and do the same thing. Well, let's get rid of that and let's express it as a function of the spot price because we don't have to calculate the spot price. We can observe the spot price. So, it's the spot price, whatever the spot price is, minus whatever the delivery price is on the contract discounted back to the day that we're observing that spot price. So let's uh, just give a, a quick example. If, uh, let's say we observe a spot price of 50 bucks. Our original K, uh, when we entered the contract, uh, we had a forward or futures price of $45. The value of the contract would then be 50 minus uh, 45 discounted backwards to the time to the point in time that we observe the $50. Now, I'm not going to solve it. I just want to show you something here. Okay, so this would be the value if S not equals 50. Watch what I'm going to do here. If S not rises to $51, the value of the contract now equals $51 minus. 45e to the negative rt. Notice that this is a constant term. So the only thing that changes is the spot price. Therefore, we can make a conclusion. The value of a forward contract will increase by the change in the spot price. So if the spot price goes up a buck, the value of the forward contract goes up a buck. If the spot price goes down a buck, the value of the forward contract goes down a buck. Because we've expressed the value of the contract as a function of the spot price minus a constant term. So no matter what the spot price is, we'll always be subtracting the same constant term. All of a sudden, it just got really easy to figure out what's going on with the forward price. So if we observe the underlying asset up strong, up strong in a day, let's say it's up $5 in a day, you know the value for the long side is up 5 and the value for the short side is down 5 because we've been able to express it now as a function of an observable underlying asset price minus a constant. Isn't that beautiful? 
can we do that for known income? What can we do there? Well, let's, uh, let's, let's follow it through and see what we get. Now remember, I'm going to say it again, I is the net present value of cash flows. It is not the cash flow itself, it is the net present value of the cash flow. So, when you originally calculated the forward price, let's say you entered into something a year ago, and you calculated the forward price. You calculated at that point in time knowing that there was a year of income. If there's only six months left, the net present value of the future cash flows is going to change. Be aware of that. But let's see what we get when we substitute uh, uh, for F0, when we substitute all of this in. So, F0 equals, uh, uh, or sorry, the value F equals, S naught minus I E to the R T minus K. So all we did was we took the F naught term and substituted all of this in minus K and of course E to the negative R T. So all we want to do now is expand and see if we can't get rid of a bunch of stuff, right? You know, that's the nice thing about math is it allows us because it's so precise, it allows us to arrive at other conclusions we might normally not see right away. So let's just go through this and see what we get. So we'll get S naught minus I E to the R T. We're just multiplying through by each term, E to the negative R T minus K E to the negative R T. So just to see what I've done, I've taken this whole term and multiplied it by the term outside, minus this term multiplied by the term outside, and expanded it across. So we know that we're going to get S0 minus I e to the RT times e to the negative RT. And I should write that rule up here. If you have x to the y times x to the z, it is the same as x to the y plus z, just so that you know. So RT minus RT, we add them together, gives us e to the 0 minus ke to the negative RT, which is a 1, so we'll get S0 minus the net present value of the income minus ke to the negative RT. So there we go, but let's be very clear here what we're doing. Watch this income term, it's the net present value of the future cash flows. So be very careful that you don't just substitute the cash flow in. I, I've repeated it many times. I'm going to keep saying it because it trips everyone up. It's the net present value of it. Well, what about known yield? Is there anything interesting we can say about this? Well, let's go through the steps and see, uh, and see what we get on that, uh, on that uh, regard here. Let's uh, go to white here. So we'll just substitute in, there is our value equals, and for F0, we're going to substitute in the whole term, S0 uh, E to the R minus Q T minus K, that is our bracket term, E to the negative R T. Multiply out and expand equals S0 E R minus Q T times E negative R T minus k. So let's expand the t inside here. S naught, we get e to the r t minus q t. All we've done is just expand the t inside the brackets times e to the negative r t. Oh, sorry, I forgot here. Minus k to e to the negative r t. So let's deal with this mess that we have here. We have S naught e to the rt minus qt minus rt. Remember, we just add all the terms together, so we have a positive rt minus rt, so that takes care of that, minus qt. So we have e to the negative qt is all that's left over, minus k e to the negative rt. So we're simply taking the spot price uh, um, and discounting that back by the yield it will provide. That makes sense, right? And then taking the difference, subtract the, um, the, current, the current value of the original um, futures price to whatever time we're valuing the contract at. So we come up with uh, what we've done here, to be very clear, is we've expressed the value 
of each futures contract without having to calculate a new futures price each time. We've expressed it as a function, f is a function of a spot price, a risk-free rate, the time, the net present value of income, uh, or um, q. So they're all expressed as a function of observable events, not calculable events. So we don't have to calculate anything here. We can observe S0. We can observe the risk-free rate. We can observe the time. We know what the uh, uh, income is. Here, yes, you'll have to calculate the net present value. And we know what Q is. But what will we have to do with Q? Everybody? We will have to convert. We still have to convert from a periodicity of M to continuous compounding. So there we go. There's uh, some nice derivations of expressing the uh, future, uh, the value of a futures contract as a function of the spot price. Now, one last issue. What I showed you down here works for all of these. Uh, these, these other terms become constants as well, except for the known income. As, as uh, dividend payments disappear and fall behind, we have fewer and fewer in front. So uh, there is still some calculating to do, but the important thing is that we can see that the big driver of the change in the value of any contract is the change in the underlying asset price itself. That is the biggest driver, because we can take out a constant term, a constant term, and a constant term. There we go.